This week's episode of Lollygagging will be audio only. And now, here are Rick and Dave. Hi everyone, welcome to Lollygagging with Rick and Dave. I am Dave Prine, and with me is... Rick Dearman. Hey Rick, how's it going? Yeah, pretty good. Pretty, uh, with, uh, my internet died today, so we have no, no video. Um, but we'll try and make it look pretty later. <laughs> I mean, that's going to that's gonna be a Herculean task, but I know Rick will, will accomplish that. Hey, so Rick, um, so... Uh, since I can't see you, I guess I'll have to listen to you and ask you questions. But um, actually, it's, it's kind of interesting that you're having technical difficulties on the day that we are uh, going to talk about listening comprehension. So um, I have to tell you, my listening comprehension is really bad. I'm more of a visual guy. I look at words. Uh, I read books. Um, when I'm watching movies, I go for the subtitles more than the audio, which I know is bad. Um, but I'm, I kind of rely on words. And I would love to know what your... Um, ability is for listening comprehension, and I'd love to hear what you think I can do in order to improve mine. Right, well, I mean, basically, I think I've, I've come up with five things that you can do, or, or anyone can do as a self-study language learner, to try and help them improve their listening comprehension. Because, quite honestly, I think listening comprehension, certainly for me, is the most difficult thing of language learning. It's, it's much harder for me to understand somebody who's speaking in rapid-fire French or Italian than it is for me to read a book. Um, because obviously you read at your own pace and you know you can take your time and look things up. And if you're, if you're speaking, then obviously in your head you've already worked out what it is you're going to say and then you know the dialogue and what vocabulary you know and you, and you can produce the output, hopefully. Um, but I think listening comprehension is really difficult because you get natives speak really quickly. They use words you're not expecting. They do it in an order that you know you wouldn't really um, expect. And so, yeah. So what we're going to do today is I'll just go through the top five things that um, I've learned, mostly as the administrator of the Language Learners Forum. Um, so this isn't just me. This is a lot of people, a lot of polyglots. Um, use these sort of things to help them um, get better at understanding and comprehending native speakers. So the very first thing is, number one, talk to native speakers. Now, everybody and their dog will tell you, oh, speak from day one and talk to people and all that. Um, and it is a really good way to start to learn Especially if one of the phrases you learn quite quickly is, uh, please speak slowly. Please, <laughs> please speak slower. <laughs> um, but one thing I do want to say, um, you know, I often see videos where people go out and they, you know, they try and speak to waitresses in Mandarin or, you know, something like that. And, and that is not the best way to do it. A pro tip here is to find a native speaker who is bored out of their mind. Right. Uh, because if you if you try and talk to a really busy waitress who's got 20 tables to do and you know there's 100 people with orders to take and all that she ain't got time or the interest to be your sort of language learning tutor you know what i mean uh -huh. so what we do is try and find somebody who's bored now if you for example were to find somebody who was guarding a parking garage um you know i remember when i was in the philippines the I used to have a lot of a lot of guys who would just sit in guard booths and watch the cars and things to make sure nothing got stolen or broken into. Um, not as high tech as CCTV, but probably more effective. And so, uh, you know, these guys they sit there for eight hours a day and they are bored out of their brain, you know. And um, they've read pretty much every book ever written, um, and they just want to talk to somebody. So they're quite okay with um, speaking to somebody who isn't necessarily uh, as good at the language as they could be, and they're quite happy to you know, try and help you. Now, not everybody, but generally most people are. And I remember when I went to Rome, I, um, I, saw, I went with my daughter, and we saw a, a guy who was in the metro, a homeless man who was in the metro, but he had two dogs. Um, and then 
I gave him a bit of money, and then and it wasn't really to practice English, but it, uh, Italian with him. But it was more because my daughter wanted to know what breed of dogs they were. So I, you know, I, I asked him in Italian, and we spoke about his dogs, and then we talked about him, and then we had a pretty good sort of half-hour conversation. And when I left, I, you know, I sort of 20 euro because I basically had um, a half an hour tutorial in Italian. <laughs> Um, but he was quite happy to talk, and I was quite happy to give him money because I, I, I'm paying tutors to do that anyway. You know, um, and I'm not saying go out and try and find a bunch of homeless people, but just people who want to talk and have the time uh, is what I'm saying. So, tip number one: talk to natives, and you can do it from day one. You know, obviously, you're not going to be very good at it initially. Um, this is probably the best tip is. That tip is probably the best one for intermediate learners. You know, beginners. Although you, Dave, you quite, quite, um, you know, you're quite an extrovert. A, a little bit, yeah. I've, I've, I've been known to go up to strangers and, and you know, say, pra practice the, the seven words that I know. Um, but of course, the danger in that is being able to say a number of things. You know, being able to um, either say them on the fly or have them sort of uh, preset in my brain. Uh, of course, the, the problem is when they respond and I don't understand what they're saying, especially if I'm asking, say, you know, directions or, um, you know, how do I stop this bleeding? And if I can't understand what they're saying, I, I'm kind of, you know, painted into a corner. Yeah, right now we've got, we've lost Rick. We've lost Rick. He's somewhere out there. So um, I'll, uh, I'll fill in for Rick and uh, go on, Rick. So, uh, your man there, he's, uh, listening and, um, and, uh, pass the beer and... Okay, this is, I'm not, I'm not doing a good job of being Rick. Okay. Uh, is that better? Oh, that's, that's, the that, of mine? that's much better, yeah. Okay, I think it was just because I wasn't holding the phone to my head. Oh, okay, that might do it, okay. <clears throat> Alright, start again, one, two, three. Okay. Um, right, Dave, um, like you're saying, you know, talking to, to native speakers when you're a beginner is really difficult because they, they fire words back at you. Um, lots of times because you've practiced the question so well, they actually think you speak the language. Uh, that is true. And so, you know, you understand everything, uh, which you don't. So one of the things you have to do is before you ask a question, you should sort of preempt some of the words that you're probably going to get. So. You know, if you're if you're learning, if you want to ask questions about where to go before you arrive in the in the place where you are, um, needing a language, then you should know the word for right, left, forward, um, street, etc. Um, and then try and parse the words. So, for listening comprehension, a lot of times what you're trying to do is not understand the whole sentence; just try and understand enough words in the sentence. Hello? Hi, Dave. Oh, there you go. Okay. You, you, yeah, you, this seems to be the day that everybody decides to call me as well. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so anyway, when, when you're, when you're um, talking to natives, you, as a beginner, you probably want to be able to parse the words. And when you're doing listening comprehension, when you're moving into the intermediate levels, you're still trying to do the same thing. You're trying to catch enough words in the phrase to be able to read... Um, reconstitute the phrase in your head to work out what they're saying. Now, even in English, you, you have this problem, like if you're standing on a train platform, you might not catch everything your friend said, but you got enough of it that you understand what he was saying, if you see what I mean. You know, um, so a lot of times you don't have to understand every single word. You're not looking for perfection here. You're just trying to work out enough of the words to get the meaning of the sentence. See, and, and I, th I think I hold back from that because um, my, my biggest fear is that, and I, I agree 100% with what you're saying, and, um, you know, and, and this, this, is, this is, you know, a lot of people feel this way. My big fear, though, is that, um, you know, when I'm listening to a sentence, you know, you can get context. You can, you can if you hear, like, you know, uh, uh, left, uh, two blocks, uh, gas station, uh, you know, then then you can kind of piece things together. But my big fear is that the one word that I will miss is the word "not" in the language, because that makes an entire world of difference between 
you know, jump up, jump over the cliff and don't jump over the cliff. Yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah, yeah. Don't don't go into the light, Dave. Don't go into the light. <laughs> what what go into the light? What? <laughs> so and but but so how how do I overcome that fear of of um, wanting to know every word before uh, proceeding? Am I just being irrational? Are there ways around that? What how do you deal with that? Well, the way I normally deal with it is I try and paraphrase it back to the person. So what I'll try so you know you say okay so you mean. Go left, step onto the highway, and go across the street. And they go, no, 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 no. <laughs> don't, don't step onto the highway. That's Use a good. The that's, a, that's a good thought. I, I, I have not thought of of, of uh, saying it back to them. I just usually nod and say yes, and then run off and ask someone else a hundred feet down the road. So. Um, yeah, yeah. No, paraphrasing it back has two two benefits. It'll confirm or. You know, you'll get a confirmation or not of whether what the, of your understanding of what they said. But also, you might probably get some corrections for your pronunciation and things like that. So as a language learner, it's a double benefit, you know, because they may go, oh, bridge. No, that's not how you say bridge. You know, <laughs> bridge. Um, so you Cross the bridge. Well. <laughs> yeah. Um, but even, you know, um, the other thing I think for listening comprehension sort of language learning in general is you need lots of vocabulary. Um, you know, even if, a, if, a, if an English learner came up to you and said to you, with perfect grammar, you know, I want to go to the, uh, uh, and didn't know the word for train station, <laughs> you can't help them. Um, but if they got their grammar all wrong and said, you know, Tarzan, me go train station, where? <laughs> you know, you would, you would know, oh, okay, yeah, train station down there to the left, blah, 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 blah. Um, and then with any luck, they paraphrase it back to you and you, they'd understand. So that, that's one of the, the main ones, but it's also one of the most difficult to do, um, talk to natives. But everybody will tell you to go talk to natives straight away. Um, and depending on your, your sort of level of um, in, invert or extrovert, um, <laughs> Is how that goes. Now, the other big tip is, and this is a good one, is watch a lot of TV in the target language. And I don't, and, and lots of people like films, right? Mm -hmm. I, I'm, for language learning, I don't recommend films because films, you get 90 minutes of different actors, different accents, saying different stuff about different topics. So, but a television series, is the same characters generally talking about the same topics all the time, and they use they have the same accent, and there's, so there's consistency. And also, you'll get hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of hours of TV series. I mean, like I was trying to think, uh, how many series did Friends run? I think ten. Uh, like, yeah, so ten series, you know, an hour long show however many episodes, you know, you get a lot of hours. Um, and, and because they're more or less talking about the same stuff all the time, you start to gather words, um, you know, common vocabulary words, and, and you start to understand it a lot, a lot better. Definitely, so definitely. The, I, have, I, I watch um, How I Met Your Mother, uh, which, and, and of course with, with comedies, with either movies or with TV series, uh, it is a little... Um, I do find that there are some dangers in that uh, you are. Ha I have an American TV show, but I'm watching it with uh, German audio or German subtitles, and uh, some things don't quite translate um, either linguistically or culturally. Uh, but overall, I, I, I find that it's, it's been useful. They, they do kind of use the same terms over and over again. Uh, they are embedded in my brain. But uh, do, would you recommend watching American shows or? Or um, show, well, shows in your native I, country. I, so I do. I do translated. So I, I watch quite a lot of Netflix. So I'll see, you know, I don't know, some Marvel comic thing translated into French, for example. Um, but you really should try and get a lot of native media if you can. The difficulty there is trying to get some with subtitles. True, true. I've, I've seen a number, well, I, I don't have any German TV shows yet, but I do have a couple of, like, authentic German movies, you know, native German movies uh, that do have the subtitles, so that does help, but 
Uh, do you find do you find that say say, say I want to I want to learn German or I'm studying German? Should I get a TV series that's based in Germany, and then and you know even if I find one with subtitles and audio, would would you recommend that or might that be too advanced for someone uh, because of all the cultural references in Germany that uh, a novice learner might not have under their belt yet? Well, the thing is, you, there's lots of stuff you're not going to understand because you've got there's idioms, you know, who people use, you, there's reference, social references that you don't understand because you don't live there. Um, even even an American coming to England is going to have a problem because you know you go into London and they're using Cockney rhyming slang, <laughs> and you have no one ask you for your dog and bone, and you look at them like what? <laughs> Take my wife. What? Just leave me alone. <laughs> Have a dog. What are you? <laughs> so, um, but the thing is, you will pick up the cultural references if you just keep watching. So, what I would say is, if you're, if I was going to start out watching TV on a, on a language, and I would advise you to start immediately. The, the minute you start learning a language, whatever it is, try and get some TV shows and watch it, which is a lot easier with figs, as we discussed before, you know, French, Italian, German. And, and Somali, right? And that's what the S is, Somali. Yeah, Somali. Yeah, Somali yeah. <laughs> um, so if you if you get those are the, you, quite a lot of television in that, you won't have a really have a problem with that. But as soon as you start, get a hold of it if you can. So books, television shows, and start watching them. And then if you're if you're beginning and you're starting out, and all you've learned is ten words, well, watch the whole show and try and find when they say one of those ten words. Because if one of the ten words is yes or no, well, they're pretty likely to say it. Somebody's going to, you know, in an hour-long TV show, somebody's probably going to say, hello, yes or no. So then you're just spotting the words, and, and you're sort of listening to the language. But as you get on, like, intermediate level, then you're going to start understanding a lot more of the, you know, things that get repeated all the time. Like, we have to go to school, we have to go to school, I'm late for school, blah, blah, blah. You're going to get, you know, you'll, you'll get it. So, um, and then it'll just sink into your head, and every time you hear it, you'll just know what they're saying, and it won't be a problem. And then you can start concentrating on, like, you'll sort of learn grammar automatically, you know, because you're hearing it all the time. So you just get used to, you know, preposition order and all that sort of stuff. But, I mean, I, 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 I'm not talking about a television show. I'm talking about... Or 500 hours of TV shows. <laughs> right. I'm not, I'm not, you're, you're not, you know, you watch one TV show and you're, oh, I don't understand anything. No, you watched one TV show. When you get to where you've watched 500 hours of a TV show, like if you've watched all 10 seasons of Friends twice, you're going to know a lot of words. You know, <laughs> <laughs> you know we're on a break. It's probably going to be. <laughs> <laughs> You'll know that one. So, highly recommend watching lots and lots of TV. Now, the other thing you can do is a lot because I was saying, like, when you talk to native speakers, you watch TV. They're all speaking at an actual rate, like we are now in English. You know, we're not slowing down for anything. But when you're a learner, you you, you need it to slow down a bit. You know, and I covered this on my channel on how to slow things down with Audacity, which is a free bit of software. Mm -hmm. So if you can get like an audio clip um, from a podcast or, or from a TV show or whatever, you can slow down, um, you know, like we talked about, or you with your guitar gizmo, um, can slow down the words without changing the pitch to, to try and pick out individual words, reconstruct them as a sentence, and then speed it up gradually so that you get used to hearing that, you know, quickly. Now, I wouldn't recommend doing that for every television show. That would be insanely boring and annoying. But if there's just like, you you know, you get to an intermediate stage and you, you probably understand 75, 80% of what's happening in this TV show. And then, you know, they're having, you know, some cop is having a discussion with some lawyer and you don't understand any of it. Well, if you cut that bit of audio out and then just slow it down and try and transcribe it by picking out each word little by little um, 
and reconstruct the audio, then you'll, you'll get a lot more out of it. So there's a bit of extensive, um, you know, watching. And then slowing down the audio and listening is, is really intensive listening to try and get your, your listening comprehension better by slowing it down, picking out the words, reconstructing the sentence, and then listening to it at normal speed so that you understand it. Does that make sense? Yeah, to totally. Um, but my one question is, um, for if I have, a, say, an MP3 that I can throw into Audacity, or if I have, um, you know, I, I do have an audio book on CD I can put into my uh, physical device that actually slows down, um, you know, CDs, uh, you know, to half speed and whatnot. But what if I'm watching a DVD? How do I get the audio into a format that I can um, manipulate. Is, is, are there ways to do that? Are, are there legal ways to do that or um, non-questionable well, ways? <laughs> well, most, most, um, most countries allow you to make a legal copy of a DVD. But in this example, you, don't, you wouldn't actually need to do that. You could, assuming you have a, a DVD player on your computer, you can just stick it in the computer and have Audacity record um, the sound from your sound card, if you see what I mean. Oh, really? Sort of like we're for this podcast. But, oh, okay. Um, yeah, so you just, you start playing the movie at the point you want to record, and you press record on the, you know, a bit like you do you used to do with your cassette player, you know, when, the, when, you, when you're really old like me. You I used to listen to the radio, oh, here's a cool song, and you press record on your cassette player to record the song. Sorry, I, don't, I have no idea what a cassette player is because I'm... Uh, or radio. Yeah, yeah or, or even a CD. What are these ancient devices you talk about? Yeah. So, but anyway, so if, if you, you just record the output of the, the sound on your on the thing. And you could do the same thing if you, if you don't have a DVD player on your computer, for example. You could set up Audacity with your microphone near the television, put the CD player in, go to the bit you want to record, play it, press record and uh, you know so then you've captured that piece of audio that you want to slow down and listen to excellent I, I will I will I will start trying that this week uh, these are things that I have not done I've, I've done audio you know, like CDs but I have not manipulated DVDs yet so I will uh, I will try that this weekend now that I will have some free time so thank you thank you for that suggestion so I mean there are other things you can you can make copies of DVDs to get it into um, another format like a, a video format that plays on their computer, mm -hmm. and there's free open source software for that. Things like um, Handbrake, which runs on pretty much every uh, operating system, will 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 allow you to convert a DVD to a, a file. And legally, you'd have to check your own country, but most countries allow you to make one copy um, as a backup of something you've purchased. So you should be okay um, in that example. Thank so if we move on. Now, to the fourth one, and this is a, quite a good one, and, and you mentioned you had an audiobook, right? Yes. Um, now, for this one, you need two things. You need the audiobook and the book, um, and you also need the audiobook to be non-abridged. So, um, what I mean is, um, you want them to read every word that was written in the book out loud. Now, a lot of newer audiobooks, they, they do an abridged version where they sort of say a summary of it. Um, some authors, like Stephen King, for example, insist that it's unabridged. An audiobook is unabridged. So if you get a Stephen King book and, you're, and they're reading the audiobook, it is the same words he wrote in the actual book. And that's the sort of thing you want. So if you wanted a free public domain, there's a, you can go to LibriVox, which we can put in the show notes, but um, they have public domain books by, you know, Mark Twain and Jules Verne and, you know, whoever else. Um, and you can get the actual book as a text file in um, you know, all different kinds of formats, EPUB, Kindle or or whatever. And you can get the audio, which is read by volunteers. And you can get it into lots of different languages. So, for example, um, recently I got... Um, Jules Verne's um, Around the World in 80 Days. Downloaded all of, you know, the zip file of the whole audiobook, uh, which is broken into chapters. And then I basically downloaded the book as a text file, chopped it up 
in the chapters, you know, copy, paste, copy, paste, copy, paste. Hmm. And then um, I used a tool called Substudy, which is on our forum. I can put links in. Um, and, and I just aligned the text to the to the audio. Mm -hmm. So that I could put it into like VLC player or Windows Media Player and I and something that will display subtitles. Right? So I, I basically created a subtitle file and I listened to the book and I watched the subtitles. Now, if you're not that high tech, because um, I'm an ex computer programmer and I like that sort of thing and I know Dave, you're not quite you know, nerd, nerd, anky guy. <laughs> uh, you can do the low tech version, which is get the book, the actual paper book, that book or Kindle book if you need an ebook, and listen on your cassette player or other audio playing device whilst reading. So anyway, listen and read is is basically it. So what you're doing is you're hearing the 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 native speakers reading the book to you, basically. You know, sort of like your parents used to read your book to you. Well, it's the same thing, just a sort of a grown-up version of that. So, a lot of times when you're reading books, certainly in French, I find that I pronounce the word the English way. Um, you know, because pronunciation is spelled exactly the same in French and in English, but it's said differently. Um, so, you, you get the native speaker who's pronouncing the words uh, as, as they would, because they're a native, and that's just the way they talk. <laughs> and you can read along with the words, so you can see how a word is pronounced. You know, if they're not sounding out of, um, you know, if there's a silent letters and all that sort of stuff, or they're, you know, liaising the words together and all, and, you know, you, you can you get a better feel for it, because you're reading along with them while they're doing it. So it's sort of like subtitles in a film. But it's, lead, it's, it's listening to them read you this book, and you just follow along. What you're really trying to do here is listen, not read so much. Um, but you're reading just to understand what they're saying, if that makes sense. Totally, yeah, yeah. yeah. In fact, I, I've, so, I've done that with uh, the, the first Harry Potter book. I have that uh, on audio uh, CD. And, um, and so I've been using that and reading along with it. And actually, there are, there are a couple small deviations between the two, but overall it's it's a wonderful resource and uh, I, I'm hoping to find other uh, audiobooks in German uh, after I'm done with this to continue that trend. So yeah, so that, that, that's been hopeful so far. So, um, so, so the living book is really good because it's all public domain free books. So you can, um, so they're just reading out public domain books. So you can get all of the text, you can manipulate the text if you're a you know, computer guy, you can do all kinds of Fancy stuff with it. Here's the book. Like, for example, I know, I know somebody. Well, you know Janice as well. She she tends to. She has both. What she's told me, she she uses her tablet because the tablet you can play the audio on the on the media player while reading. You know the text. So is that is that? Oh, but you're you're talking about the actual audio file that they make. It's not that the, her tablet reads the text out loud, as far as like text recognition. Oh right? no 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 no! It's, this isn't a this isn't a mechanical voice or a computer generated voice. This is actually listening to the person reading it out loud and following along with the text. It's just because you have the tablet and it can display text and play audio at the same time. Okay. Um, there are things you can do if you, because if you, some people can't stand computer voices, computer generated voices. Some don't find them so bad. There is a free thing called FB Reader, which stands for Free Book Reader um, app, which you can get um, for just everything, you know, uh, uh, Apple and Android and PCs and Macs and you name it. Yeah. But that will read uh, with a computer generated voice. So you can. Put it on your Android phone, and you can get it to read you the thing out loud in the language. And you can download, um, you know, with, with Apple and with Android, you can download different computer voices, male and female, French and Italian and English and whatever else. I'm so sorry, you, Dave, you, I can't do that. Exactly. <laughs> if you if you can listen to the computer voices, then that's another good way to do it. But the pronunciation. Is very mechanical, and it is much better to get a person to read it to you. So, if you can, if you can find a Leverbox book, 
um, you know, I'd re highly recommend it because they're free. They don't cost you anything. They're all in the public domain. And they're great literature because they're great books. So, you know, um, Excellent. You know, that's why they've been around. Excellent. So. That, will, that will be my next, uh, my next task uh, after, uh, um, yeah, after, after this week. I will have some free time to uh, start listening some more. So thank you for that. So, and you, you, you have one more tip, don't you? Uh, one more, yeah, the fifth and final, is uh, a thing called subs to SRS. Now, this... Whoa, does wait, slow down. Oh. That's crazy. <laughs> what, what, what can a person like me do with that? It's a bit more complicated. Um, and you probably, if you're not really technical, it can be a bit daunting. But it is easy enough to do. And all you're doing is you're taking subtitles from your films. Uh, it takes the timings from the subtitle to extract the audio of that sentence and a little picture of what's happening at the scene at the time. Yeah? Okay. And then what it does is it generates a flashcard, an electronic flashcard, uh, uh, usually using a free open source Anki deck, and it prompts you. So what it does is it shows you the picture of what's happening on the screen, you know, um, Iron Man punching somebody or something, <laughs> and then the audio of him saying, you know, got you, you come back, whatever. Um, uh, probably not an actual quote from the, any of the movies, but fair enough. I'm pretty sure it's almost, it would have been in there, but they, you know, redacted it. Anyway, um, so it, it plays that, and then, and, and in your head, you try and work out what it is they said, because it's it said in the, in the target language, and then you press the OK, and it shows you what they actually said, uh, written in the target language, but also written in the, um, your native language because what it does is it takes the two subtitles so when you find a film you find a film that say I'm learning um, using it for French I want French subtitles and English subtitles and then I basically extract the you know, there's, there's just instructions for doing this and if you go to the forum there's you can hundreds of people to help you but basically it'll extract the audio pictures the two subtitles and then it basically puts them together and joins up flashcards. Now, what happens is, I think when I did it, I did it for Finnish, oddly enough, <laughs> and I got um, about 350 cards per movie. Now, I was watching Lego movies. Um, <laughs> oh, the, Rick, so Rick, the, I, the, I, the books are so much better. Oh, I know, I know, I know, but there you go. But anyway, I, I learned really strange words like that I was never ever going to lose, were, you know, like Wonder Woman. And, <laughs> Batman and things like that and finish and it's like when am I ever going to use this but anyway <laughs> um, so a lot of this you might a lot of the cards you can just delete straight away like geez I'm not ever going to say that so I can just get rid of that you know all that sort of thing but, um, but it is good and it, it creates little earworms in your head you know uh, and if you go back and then watch the movie you actually understand it because you remember all of the cards if you see what I mean so once you've gone through the cards a few times, you actually start remembering it. And, as we know, because lots of words are common, when you watch another movie, you sort of get the same, the, the, you know, repeats. Effectively. So that's basically the five. So I'll just recap them. First one, talk to natives, but, you know, try and be polite. They're not there to teach you a language unless you're paying them. So, you know. Try and find somebody who's bored and wants to talk and is willing to help. Don't just assume that every native is there to make you a language. Um, number two, watch a load of TV. And I don't mean a little bit of TV. I mean hundreds of hours of TV in your target language. And it doesn't really matter whether it's translated or, um, you know, like an American show translated into German or whether it's a German show. Watch it because it's in German. And as soon as you possibly can, turn off the subtitles. As soon as you can. Because you don't really want to, because if you're, if you're, even if the subtitles are in German, Dave, you're reading German. You're not listening to German. Exactly. That's my crutch. Yeah. <laughs> so turn off the subtitles as soon as you can. Um, probably after the, you know, the, the second time you watch Friends, leave the subtitles. <laughs> okay. All right. We were on a break. Uh, and then try and try and use slow audio, like so intensive listening, where you can. Where you try and you take a little clip and you try and transcribe it. You try and transcribe each and every word. I mean, song lyrics are great for this. Actually, if you like if you like music and you want songs, 
you can generally get song lyrics um, straight off the internet. Somebody's already given you, so you you already have a transcription to check against. So you can just take the song, slow it down, pick out the words, do the transcription, and then compare your version of what you thought they said to the version of what they actually said uh, in the lyrics. So that's it's intensive listening, that part. And then there's listen and read, number four, which is basically get a book with a corresponding exact audio and read along while the native is speaking to you or reading the book to you. And fifth one is subtitles to SS, SRS, so spaced repetition is what it actually stands for. So subtitles to spaced repetition, um, where you're taking a movie and you're effectively memorizing the dialogue of the movie over time. Um, and of course, once you've internalized that dialogue, you should be able to start, you know, actively using that dialogue later at some point. Okay, and, so I, and I do want to mention, I do want to mention that um, that this last one is uh, what you gave a talk on at the Polyglot Gathering this year, correct? Yeah, that's right. I did a I did a, um, a talk on to show people at the Polyglot Gathering, so to show polyglots, people who already know how to speak lots of different languages, how they can use films and Based repetition software to internalize dialogue in, in movies and TV shows, and and you can also use this for audiobooks, by the way. But um, but but just to internalize um, dialogue. Okay, and and as as of this moment, your video has not been posted, but it should be posted any day uh, on the uh, Polyglot Gathering YouTube page. <clears throat> so we should probably put a note in the notes when that uh, does get posted. Yeah, we'll do. Uh, we'll We'll leave a link anyway to the Polygot Gathering channel, just because there's loads of loads of interesting stuff for everybody to watch. Excellent. All right. Well, thank you, Rick. Thank you for those tips. Uh, I will actually uh, definitely be incorporating some of those. I really need to get my language listening skills uh, up and running, and uh, quite soon. So, uh, so I will definitely try some or all of those, and I will definitely be coming to you and crying uh, when I can't figure out the last one, and then you can help me by uh, being my tech guy. How does that sound? Yeah, I, I, I get paid for that. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it, well, if I'm going to spend money, I'll, I'll, I'll pay a native speaker to teach me. How does that sound? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> kind of professional. Oh. <laughs> All right. Great. It was great talking to you. And uh, like I said, we'll, we'll try and make the video look pretty. Hopefully we'll find some pictures of something nice. Um, maybe perhaps Bob Bratislava. Hey, that, that sounds great. That sounds great. Well, thanks, thanks, Rick. Thanks for the tips. I appreciate you taking the time. And uh, we will talk to you uh, hopefully in a week or so. Okay. Talk to you next week. <laughs> All right. Take care, Bye, buddy. everybody. Bye-bye. Uh, don't forget to subscribe. Click. All right. I've, so, I've stopped recording. Tell me your most embarrassing secret. Yeah, right.